The Federal Reserve obliged markets with another 25 basis point rate cut, bringing the Fed funds rate target to 1.75 to 2 percent. Let's do a three-point analysis of what does this indicate about the U.S. economy. One, what are Fed's observations on the U.S. economy? Well, the Federal Reserve has reiterated that the U.S. economy, particularly its strong labor market, is doing quite well. While household spending has been rising at a strong pace, business, fixed investment and exports have weakened. Surprisingly, compared to its June projections, the Fed has nudged the GDP estimates higher for 2019 and 2021 by 10 basis points. Now, while keeping the same estimate for 2020. Further, unlike the June review, the Fed has also kept the inflation projections intact and expects to reach the inflation target of 2% by 2021. Two, so why has Fed lowered the rate if GDP is looking stronger? Well, the answer is that global growth is weak and trade policy uncertainties continue. The research paper also says that due to renewed uncertainty since May 2019, Additional knock-on effects may be seen on GDP this year and the next. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has also underlined that the Fed's stance will be data-dependent and if global growth decelerates substantially, it would rely on a combination of aggressive forward guidance and asset purchases, as was done during the financial crisis. He also emphasized that negative policy rate is not likely policy tool to combat recession for the Federal Reserve. Pavel also played down the recent liquidity concerns in the repo market and said it has no implication for the monetary policy. Three, what are the key takeaways then? Well, one key takeaway is that the extent of dissent we saw within the Fed about the monetary policy. Two members of the FOMC did not want a rate cut this time, while one wanted a 50 basis point cut. That's not all. The dot plot projections show that only seven of the 17 members see another rate cut this year. The current rate cut is best understood from a risk management perspective to offset the impact of the global growth slowdown and trade uncertainty and the unprecedented easing bias by numerous central banks. Lower rates abroad are a sign of lower growth and weak inflation and as the global capital markets are integrated, the US policy rate also needs to adjust accordingly. Note that in the last one and a half months, 28 central banks have opted for policy rate cuts, which was a scenario right after the global financial crisis of 2007-2008. Further, dollar strengthened after the Fed announcement, thanks to its stance being a little more hawkish than what the market was expecting. We might see further weakness in emerging market currencies and FII outflows from emerging markets now.